Hi there, I'm Nick, and I'm the lead engineer of the uh, Blue Bank API. I'm sorry I couldn't be with you uh, in India today, but we thought we'd uh, pre record a session where we could talk to you a little bit about Blue Bank API and about the motivations that are behind doing it. So, what is Blue Bank about? Blue Bank is, is really something that's there to uh, help us to begin to have a conversation with the external development community about what the bank could do um, in terms of making banking features available to third parties so that they can develop applications. So it's the beginning of that conversation and it's your chance to tell us what you think of the functionality um, what features that you think are missing that you would like to see and also the style of the API so you know what does it does it um, does it match your expectations in terms of how you talk to the API so we wanted to start off with something uh, fairly well scoped and we decided that personal banking was probably a good scope to go with it's something that lots of fintechs um, are obviously interested in and the sort of um, hackathon um, use cases as well that we commonly see are, are very often focused on personal banking. So we went with that and we decided that what we wanted to do in the first release of Blue Bank is to get feature parity with our own first party application. So in theory, somebody could take Blue Bank and make an application that did all of the same things that our first party mobile applications do. Another thing we wanted to do was to get into a, a bit more of an iterative uh, development loop with this. And so it's, it's really important for us to uh, bring new features to each of the new hackathons that we run in 2016 to get your feedback and uh, to continue to iterate and add features to the product. And so we really do want to encourage you to uh, let us know uh, what you think, what's missing, what's good, etc. So diving into the technology a wee bit. So it's always best, I think, to start to understand the data model that's behind anything. Certainly when I'm writing code, that's what I like to do. And so this diagram that you can see here shows um, the relationships between the top level resources that we expose through the API. So the first one is customer, um, which obviously describes a customer, their name and their address details fundamentally in the current release. Customers then have one or more account objects and an account object has got things like a balance and a sort code and account number, that kind of thing. And then a sub-resource of accounts is transactions. So uh, transactions are uh, objects that have things like uh, descriptions, transaction amount, transaction date and time and so on. So you can see that with that very simple data model, we uh, have, have exposed basically what's required in order to allow you to build an application that would let you um, show a customer, show them their accounts, show them their transactions. And, and that was what we were aiming to do in this release. So, how do you get access to this? So we have a developer portal. On the developer portal, we have um, all of the documentation, there's a little sandbox there that allows you to try out the various calls and that's where you need to go sign up. So we need you to go and sign up to get access to the API at the URL that you can see there on the screen. And once you do that, we need you to uh, click into the APIs that are available and sign up for the, the latest release, which is 0.6 at the moment. So sign up for that one and that'll get you access to the API. When you do that, you'll be able to see screens like the one that we're showing here, which has the documentation for the API. So that shows all of the calls that you can make. It shows um, what you need to pass in when you make an API call. And it shows you the schema of the objects that you get back. So, um, and it also has a, a try it out uh, feature, which is pretty uh, common on most APIs these days where you can actually uh, try the API out live and, and see those objects coming back. 
There's one thing you need to understand in terms of being able to successfully call the API, so, which, is, which is you need to be able to authenticate to the API. So the, the way to do that is, is on this screen and it's also in our, our getting started guide on the portal. But essentially you need to make a call um, to retrieve a bearer token and uh, we will return you that token and that token then has to be passed with every API call that you make. If you don't pass that, you'll get an unauthorized response code, a HTTP 401 code. So if you see that, it's probably because you didn't pass in the bearer code that you need. And now we'll uh, go on to a demo where I'll actually show you the portal and um, show you how to make some successful calls against it.